Hi, yeah, eights, and welcome to the GCC Options Assembly for 2021. Normally, by now, I'd have had an assembly with you. I'd have stood in front of you and explained to you your choices, uh, what choices you can make, when you've got to make them, and I've given you some guidance for how to make those choices and what to choose. Unfortunately, we can't do that this year, so we've come online, and this is your Options Assembly. The purpose is to explain the process, so what happens, what goes when, who does what, to tell you what you need to choose, and then to give you a little bit of guidance about how to make those choices. Okay, that's our sort of job today. Now then, you would have seen the platform, the PowerPoint platform, from which everything else works. So on the platform you found this. There are links to different subjects, there are links to questionnaire, there's links to the application form. You can link to exam boards and the programs of study for year nines and above. Everything comes from here, so don't delete this folder. Now then, it's all been published this week. On the main page, you've got me still on the stage with a whiteboard. Those links will take you to a page on that page will be information about the subject and also if you click on the link in the bottom right hand corner there'll be an audio file for a member of staff explaining to you the details of that subject so I'd encourage you to listen to all those please okay and that's quite interesting you will have questions and you should have questions there is a speech bubble I've highlighted it in red on this little slide there is a speech bubble on the main page if you click on that it takes you to a questionnaire and that will come to me and I'll send your question to a member of staff best suited to answer it. So it might be to a subject teacher, it might be to your form teacher or head of year, or it might come to me. Okay, so please, I'm expecting you to have questions, I'm expecting you to, to email me if you're using that form please. Um, and if you have two or three questions, four questions, that's that's fine, just, just send them in and I'll get back to you, or somebody will get back to you. Okay, please though, don't use this over half term because I may not actually look at the folder over half term. Okay, the deadline for completion is Thursday 11th of March. That gives us about two and a half, three weeks really to, to sort ourselves out and make sure we're clear on what we're going to study. Okay, so hopefully it's plenty of time. So this is your curriculum. So you will study English, Maths and Science. Games, you still get games lessons, you do PSHE. And you get RE. Okay, that's what everybody studies. In addition, you have to study one one of these subjects as part of our core curriculum. Now this is your choice, but it must be one of computer science, French, geography, German, history, or triple science. So you need to do one of these. Now the reason for this is many to be honest. These are traditional academic subjects that people who may well be your admissions officers or your employers in the future, they recognise these and value these subjects. These are also ones that have been promoted by the government, therefore they have value there. Okay, so we ask you not to do them all, but to do at least one of these subjects. You could, however, find yourself studying computer science, number one, French, geography, German and history. That will be fine. Or you might just choose computer science and choose others from the full list. So these are the option subjects, this is the full list and our key thing for you is that we aim for a broad and balanced curriculum. Now this is really important, you'll see this a few times and I mentioned it to you quite a few times as well. It's important that you have a range of subjects. Nobody knows what the future holds and what skills or knowledge you will need in the future and this isn't about preparing for a job. What this is about, what GCSEs are about, is preparing for life in general. It's so that you know what's going on as you go through through life. You can read the paper and understand the issues of the day. You know who these people are. You can interpret data on, on, on TV. You understand the questions being asked. And that's about general knowledge. And GCSE is about general knowledge. Now, if you choose art and design fine art and art and design textiles, I may well come back to you and say that's not balanced enough, not broad enough, they're too similar. Okay. However, you could choose history and geography, but then 
if you chose history, geography and sociology all from the same faculty, I might be saying, yeah, that's fine in themselves, but it's not very broad if you're doing all humanities. And it might be better to swap one of those things out for a food tech, for example, or a language, or PE, or history, sorry, or music, something that adds another set of skills. Keeping in mind all times, please, broad and balanced. We'll come back to that. We do ask you to put down five choices, not four, five. So far, the fifth one you may want to think of as a reserve, but you will be allocated four of those five subjects. And you've got to be happy to study all five. Don't think just because you put something number one, you'll automatically get that. Take for example, if you if 93 people chose history for their first subject. Now classes have a maximum number of 30, which means that three people won't fit. I'm not going to run a class for three people, so those three of those people could not do history. That happens all the way through, and my job then is not to prioritise or rank order or decide. Is my job is to make sure the biggest number of people, the majority of people, can get four of their five subjects. Okay, that's the number one priority. Okay, if there's any problems, I'll come back to you personally, but also talk to your parents. Just be aware. If there are too few students, so for example, only five students put down for PE, well, I can't run a class with five students, it won't run. But if 250 of you all put down for one subject, not everybody can do that. I don't have enough teachers. So it's likely that everybody can do a class. So my job then is to swap things around to make sure that most people can get four of their five. Finally on this, if you change your mind after, after the option deadline, you know, wait after Easter and change your mind, it's unlikely you'll be able to. Not impossible, but unlikely. It depends on there being space in the classes you want to move into. I can't move anybody out, they're fixed then, so it's unlikely, but to be honest it's not impossible. So just a little thing about helping you make your decisions. I've said to you before, GCSEs are not training for a job. Think about the future, of course, we always think about the future, but not too much, things change. GCSE is about learning a wide foundation. Again, we come back to broad and balanced curriculum. And to be honest with you, if you drop a subject at GCSE, certainly in our school and most places, you can take it again. So if you stop PE, for example, you don't study history, you can study that at A level without having done history. Yes, it's going to be hard work, but you can still do it. And you could even go to university and study history without having done it lower down the school because you've got your English and your Maths and your Science and your RE and stuff. The only one that that's not true for is probably language because it is really hard to take up a language after dropping it at GCC and doing really well in it. A lot of people take short courses, they do colloquial courses, they might do evening classes or Duolingo or Babel or something, but to actually make headway in a language is really hard once you stop. Now languages do give you a different perspective on the world, it's really useful. So we would suggest strongly that you don't drop languages. Looking at how many people in this lockdown have tried to learn a language in the spare time they've got, a lot of people regret not doing the language. We would strongly suggest that you don't make that mistake. Now this is the reality of what the future is like, likely to be. It's messy. And the more stuff you know, and the range, or the biggest range of information that you know, the more likely you'll be to be successful, and more likely you'll be to be able to adapt and respond and to learn and to take advantage of what's offered. So this is another reason why we think a broad and balanced curriculum is your best preparation. So what actually are you going to do? Have a think. What lessons do you look forward to? What do you like doing? What do you come to school thinking, yes, I've got PE today, fantastic. Because if you do, those are the subjects you should be considering taking. What are your skills, your strengths and interests? So it might be that you know already you're really good at history, and that may be one you want to carry on, you're successful, you enjoy it to carry on. Or it might be you really enjoy history, but you're not so good at it, but that's okay because you can develop it during your GCSE. Okay. 
It might be though, you kick out one or two that you know you don't want to do. You keep in one or two that you definitely want to do. And then look at the middle ones and think, well actually, what give me a best broad and balanced range? I quite enjoy all these, which fits better with my other ones? Okay, so you've got different ways of approaching it. You might consider different option faculties, so choose one for humanities, one from social sciences, uh, one from ADT, one from languages. You can choose. You could choose, you know, one language, one humanities, one creative, one applied, like business studies, for example. You probably should choose history or geography. They are really useful ways of understanding what's happening in the world, be it uh, Black Lives Matter movement, be it climate change, but be it the rise of Trump. They're really useful for that type of thing, to understand the world we're in. I said before you should choose a language and I also think you should choose something creative. Okay, the creative industry is massive and it gives a lot of benefits to the individual being creative. Okay, not just about jobs or employment, just being creative. Such a powerful thing and you should really, really consider it. But then I like all these subjects, so yeah, I find it difficult as well. Now then, so what are your next steps? Please read through all the resources, listen to the teacher explanations. They took a long time doing these, okay, so please listen to them. Some you won't want to do, that's fine, but some might interest you. If you've got a question, please follow the link and ask the question. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have discussions, have open discussions with your family and with teachers. That's absolutely fine. Just remember, it's your choice at the end of the day, and you're the person sat there for three years doing that subject. So just because Uncle Bill says that when he was at school, he did this or didn't do that, that may not relate directly to you. It's different times and you're the guy or girl in the classroom, okay? So it's up to you. Please hand in your, uh, uh, and loan, sorry again, hand in your online application form from the link on the main page. And uh, like I say, any questions, please do come back to me. Thank you for listening.